Hello, hello. Hello, hello. how are you doing? Very well, thank you. And you? Good, yeah, fantastic. fantastic. So, uh, first of all, my team, it's all out there now. Yes, thank the good Lord, it's out there. Feeling relieved now that it's all out. Happy well, I'm relieved that it's been announced to the world, but of course now we have to do it. Mm. But that's the good bit in a way, and the team have been working incredibly hard to uh, get all of the information together, and we're really, really proud of what everyone's achieved, and the brochure looks great. Mm, it does look fantastic. Those images, uh, there's someone else. They're great images. Um, so first of all, 2019, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of different stuff, it's a jam-packed season. I think Terry Paddock said on Announcement Day on Twitter that there's something for everyone for in this season. I think she's got that spot on. So um, what were you sort of trying to, how were you trying to piece together the season? What went into the kind of programming of it? What was the idea behind it? Well, obviously, the first thing we think about is breadth, because we're so lucky to have this amazing resource here. Um, we've got these two amazing theatres, and of course, this season, we're also building a third space in the Spiegel tent. So we think about the breadth of the work and the variety of work. So that's why we have four world premieres, two musicals, great revivals, um, as well as our CEFYT strand um, and our family strand. So we look for the breadth of work. Diversity is obviously important to us. I'm really thrilled that we are achieving 50-50 gender um, directors in our directors this season. Um, and so it's always going to be a mixture so that, yes, you can appeal to different kinds of people at different points in the year. You're not going to please everyone all of the time, but if you can appeal to uh, and please some of the people most of the time, then that's good. Yeah, well, I agree exactly. And um, as you said, we've got four world premieres this year. That's a lot of world premieres in one season. But it's sort of a kind of ongoing trend that we've kind of started in the last couple of seasons with premiering these new works um, and sort of challenging the audience with what they can expect. Is it something that you want to keep doing over the next few years and build on? Yeah, I guess that's the other thing that we think about a lot, which is how do we keep challenging our audience, bringing new voices to Chichester, giving people here new experiences. Another reason for the Spiegel tent is to give people this immersive experience. So those who are coming to Roy Williams' place, Sing Your Heart Out for the Lads, will be sat at the bar in that pub where the play is set, uh, the King George Tavern in South London. So um, that's definitely one of the strands. And I guess, you know, we know we're so lucky here that we've got an audience that not only loves the great revivals and classical work, but also love to be challenged. Hence, having plays like uh, Cordelia Lynn's Head of Tesman that we are, are co-producing with Headlong and The Lowry this season, which is a reimagining of Ibsen's play in a very irreverent, cheeky, witty way. I can't wait to see our audience meet that. Um, but also Eight Hotels, wonderful new play, which is a CFT commission from Nicholas Wright, which is um, a brilliant play about Paul Robeson when he played Othello on tour throughout America in the 1940s, how he had an affair with his Desdemona, who was an, uh, the wonderful Uta Hagen, who went on to become a guru of acting, uh, an acting teacher. Um, and her husband, Jose Ferrer, played Iago in that production. So the onstage dynamic was being played very much offstage too. But it's got political bite, this play, because it's set against the 1940s America and the treatment that uh, Robeson receives as he arrives in each of these hotels, eight hotels, hence the title, throughout the Midwest, is really astonishing. And, uh, and Nick, Nick Wright has made a brilliant play and fantastic that he's being partnered again with uh, Richard Eyre, who directed uh, many of his world premieres. Mm, I just can't wait for these world premieres. Honestly, like, I'm so excited about seeing these in the middle. Mm. Um, and so obviously with creative team members as well this year, there's some familiar faces coming back to Chichester, and we've also got some brand new faces as well. Um, are you looking forward to seeing everyone cracking on? Yeah, so I think that's another thing that we think about is how can we have a balance between continuity but also rebirth? And the rebirth comes through inviting new voices here. So Nicole Charles is directing the Roy Williams play. Paul Foster is coming to direct um, the Rattigan play, the revival of the Deep Blue Sea. Um, but we're also continuing our relationship with Kate Hewitt, who gave us such a brilliant production of Mike Bartlett's Cock last season. Uh, she's now coming to the main house to direct David Hare's Plenty and with her designer Georgia Lowe from that production. But we're also, you know, Richard Ayres coming back, Jeremy Sands is coming back, having directed Ennui's rehearsal for us not so long ago. So it really is a balance of new voices coming up through the ranks alongside um, continuation mm. of those brilliant artists that uh, I'm thrilled to say are happy to come back to Chichester. I must say, Daniel, you're a man of a, of a double musical season. And, uh, <laughs> I'm all here for it. I'm all here for it. I love music. Um, and yes. so this season, we've got two musicals again. Yes. Um, so a new one in the Minerva, directed by yourself. 
uh, and then also Oklahoma in the Festival Theatre. Why these two and why now? Well, um, yeah, so we had two musicals in the Festival Theatre last season, Mrs. Harris and Me and My Girl. And so there's a, you know, a little difference in that one of them is going into the Minerva. Um, but um, so this is my family, which is going to kick off the season, which I'm directing, I'm not happy to say, is a warm, funny, hilarious at times, touching chamber piece, a six-hander about an ordinary family that are falling apart at the seams written by Tim Firth, who has written the book, music and lyrics. And why now? Well, because I wanted to kick the season off with something joyful, something that everyone could um, relate to. Everyone comes from a family. And what I hope is that this is a piece about generations for generations and that people will be able to come and not only recognise themselves, um, but also recognise family members uh, and have a good laugh and a good cry together. It's about this 13-year-old girl who notices that the connection between her parents is unravelling and she's desperately trying to hold the family together and she enters a competition to take them on a holiday anywhere in the world. She wins, but rather than take them to somewhere like, you know, Venice or Venezuela, she decides to take them back to the British campsite where the parents first fell in love in order to bring them back together. And it has disastrous results initially. Um, so hopefully it's something very, very relatable, but joyful. And then Oklahoma. Well, Oklahoma is probably the musical that changed the face of musicals as we now know them. It was a real game changer. Rodgers and Hammerstein at their absolute best. Um, the first time that a complex piece with darker themes had been put, uh, where, where music and lyrics and the dialogue had been really enmeshed in such, with, in such a complex way. Um, and given what the world is going through, or the world in the UK is going through politically at the moment, I just thought we will all need a proper cheer-up by the summer, um, when we hopefully will know what's happening to us, or maybe not, who knows. Um, so I just thought, imagining the delirium of the hoedowns on our main stage, um, you know, as well as those great tunes like uh, The Surrey with the Fringe on Top, Bold A Beautiful Morning, I just thought actually it'll make us all smile in the summer and that's what we need. Yeah, absolutely, couldn't agree more. Um, and as well as then having a, having a laugh and a, and a jolly uh, with the hoedown, um, we've also got a lot of drama across all the, all the season. Um, a lot of drama going all over the place. So uh, there's three dramatic, major dramatic works in the Festival Theatre. Um, so are these plays that you've wanted to stage for a while? Have they been on your radar? Well, oddly enough, they sometimes, they come about in different ways. They sometimes start with conversations with great artists. So, for example, John Sim is one of my favourite actors. And when I was at the Crucible, he played a, a brilliant Hamlet for us. Brilliant Shakespearean actor, which I don't think many people know. He has this ability to be able to speak verse as if you're speaking everyday language. And Paul Miller directed that. And Paul is coming back to direct John as Macbeth for us. So um, obviously these plays are worth looking at because of their greatness. And it's often about the match between the actor and the character. And I'm excited about how John Sim will match with Macbeth because I think it'll give us something quite unusual. And um, obviously a huge fan of Paul Miller's work and the work he's been doing at the Orange Tree Theatre where he's had, had great success. And wonderful for us to be able to invite Dervler back having done her first Shakespeare production with us ever. Uh, she played Goneril in, Goneril in King Lear with us two years ago. So sometimes it starts with conversations with artists. That was also true about our, my conversations with Hugh Bonneville. And Hugh had a massive success here with An Enemy of the People three years ago and wanted to return. And so there were a few plays that we discussed, but this was the one where I think we both felt, ah, this is a play that, um, would work well for our audience here, but also is um, has still has something to say about um, the human condition and about joy and sadness and how they are often entwined. And then, you know, there are other plays like, for example, Plenty, which obviously caused a bit of a stir when it first started at the National Theatre at the late 70s, but has since become um, recognised as a great modern classic but because of its examination of Britishness and Englishness and the English establishment which is seen through the eyes of this incredibly uh, smart uh, strong and yet vulnerable woman um, 
I felt that it would be pertinent for us to see this again. And so in my discussions with Kate Hewitt, who I, I wanted to uh, invite back to Chichester, this again was the play that we felt actually this is, offers us a challenge, a challenge to our audience, um, be, because partly formally it's really interesting because it's not told in chronological order. So for our audience, it's like a kind of uh, 3D Rubik's Cube. You've got to piece it all together like a jigsaw puzzle in order to make up the whole picture. Um, incredibly uh, moving, but visceral and intellectually challenging. Mm. It's so fascinating hearing you talk about the way that you piece uh, productions together for a season. I was wondering if you could pick your favourite part of programming a season, and if that's too sort of nitpicky, then what was your favourite part of programming this season in particular? I think um, the, 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 the best bit is talking to artists who feel passionately about certain plays, even if they don't know them before you've given them the plays to read, because that's just where connections happen. And it's all about connections in a way. And perhaps that's a theme that's emerging this season. It's often, there's often a relationship depicted that has a kind of uh, betrayal or a lack of trust that's, and therefore needs a kind of uh, re-examination. But I think the connections made with artists, be they actors or directors, and the material, um, that's definitely an exciting bit. We, we do, you know, in making the brochure, we do have this mad two days where we rent a studio and Lydia, our, who's our director of marketing, and I um, go and work with the actors and our brilliant photographer, Seamus, and our brochure designer, Bob King. And it's, it's you know, one in, one out. So it's, it's a tight schedule um, and we have great fun in the studio over two days, uh, you know, creating these wonderful images. Um, and at that point, it really does start to feel real, which can be scary as well as exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and so this season, there's a lot of brand new stuff. And I'll get onto the Spiegelt in a minute because I want to pick your brain about it a bit more. But um, one particular thing that's, that's new for the season is the writer in residency scheme, mm -hmm. um, which this year is the brilliant Anna Lebowitz. Mm -hmm. um, are you looking forward to seeing what she's going to cook up this season? Definitely. Anna has a connection with us. Uh, she comes from Australia, but she was a trainee director here, or a young director here, I don't think she was a trainee, and she directed a production of Blue Remembered Hills in what they called Theatre on the Fly, which is like a barn erected on Oaklands Park. And Anna has kept a connection with CFT, and she did a brilliant adaptation of um, Beauty and the Beast for us two Christmases ago for Chichester Festival Youth Theatre. Because, you know, at Christmas, we give over our main stage to our youth theatre. and They play for three weeks, which is astounding. Anna, because Anna um, showed, you know, such amazing talent in her writing, um, I felt I wanted to challenge her and continue our relationship with her. And so we've commissioned many things from her, two of which are revealed in this season. So she's, she's doing a promenade um, piece for the Chichester Festival Youth Theatre, which this year, because every other year the, the youth theatre do a promenade piece. Two years ago it was Grim Tales, um, the Philip Pullman uh, version. But this year we're going to do a brand new play, which is going to take place in this, the heart of Chichester itself. It's going to be an aural experience, so everyone's going to be given a set of headphones and guided by the headphones through the streets of Chichester with a narrative. And Anna's working with um, actually a, an alumnus of CFYT, Daniel Hill, who himself specialises in these de promenade um, digital performances. So that's Anna's first uh, commission. And then the second is that she is doing the adaptation of The Butterfly Line, the Michael Morpurgo uh, children's novel, award-winning novel. And, uh, and we've already received you know, a few drafts and it's great. It's very, very touching. A touching story spanning continents and time about a young boy who befriends a lion cub and is separated and, well, I won't give the game away. Um, but again, it's just, um, it's fascinating when you have people like Anna Ledwich and Jeremy Sams, who's directing Oklahoma, who are true polymaths. They are people who can turn their hands to many things. And so Anna's having this wonderful career as a director. Um, but I love the fact that we're also encouraging her as a writer. And she's, yeah, she's terrific. Mm. And, and sticking on the butterfly line as well. Um, so obviously last year we had uh, the wonderful Midnight Gang. Um, and then we've also got another family production issue with the Butterfly Line, another adaptation as well, which is great. Um, is this, a, again, a running sort of thing that you want to programme something specifically for families every single season? Yeah, again, this is part of wanting to make sure that we as CFT are opening our arms to as many different kinds of people as possible. And, you know, lots of young people's 
uh, entry into theatre or their memory of theatre is going as a youngster uh, to see productions that were for them. And so um, this, is, this is a strand that we started last year, as you say, with The Midnight Gang, David Walliams, brilliant adaptation by Brian Lavery and directed by Dale Rooks, who is our director of Leaf Pier. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we had such a great response to that. More schools than ever came to see a production at CFYT uh, at CFT for uh, the Midnight Gang and so we hope to continue that uh, connection with our local schools but also offer you know high quality family drama so that generations within family can families can come and enjoy together mm. uh, and so flipping on the flipping on the flip side a little bit um, the Spiegel tent mm. I cannot wait to see how this turns out because everything that's been spoken about it just sounds so exciting yeah, so the Spiegel Tent. So, in our discussions with um, all kinds of audiences, we're you know, asking them and constantly in dialogue with them about what kind of thing that they want to see. And when we talk to our younger audiences, sometimes they talk about wanting a more um, uh, immediate experience or a more informal experience. And you know, sometimes, as happens with buildings, sometimes the buildings themselves can feel like a barrier almost to people feeling like they belong here. And so we were thinking about what kind of what, what kind of thing could we do, and obviously taking inspiration from Edinburgh, the South Bank, uh, Spiegel tents have become very popular. They're beautiful things, stained glass, old wood. Um, ours is a small one; it's sixteen meters in diameter, so the capacity is only about one hundred and ten. So while we are, we we are going to put a play on in our Spiegel tent, Roy Williams is placing your heart out for the lads, um, we, where we'll transform the Spiegel tent into that pub. And then around it, and for especially for two weeks, two full weeks after the end of the run of the play, we're going to hold a whole series of um, different kinds of events, be they cabaret nights or drag nights or quizzes or scratch nights, you know, connecting with our prologue or with students from the university. Um, and there'll be activities going on there throughout the day. Some of them will be free. Most of them will probably be free. Um, our Fun Palace event would be there on in, in that Sunday in October. So it was just a place for us to be able to offer a different kind of experience. Even the food and the drink is going to be different. It's going to be pints and pies, you know, rather than Prosecco and pizza, mm. which we offer in, you know, in the Foil Terrace. Um, and of course, we offer, you know, different things again in the Brasserie and the Bar and Grill. But it's just a kind of more um, informal place where people can come and hang out and have a good time. And so speaking about other events as well, so what else is going on outside of the tent throughout the season? So there's a whole tranche of events. Obviously the brilliant pre and post show talks that Kate Moss, who's our you know, wonderful um, interviewer during those sessions, they'll happen for every show throughout the season, including the Spiegel tent. But there'll be other events like, for example, um, connect, all connected to the plays. So for example, Tanya Zabo, is coming to talk about her mother's experience as a secret agent in uh, the end at the end of World War Two, because that's part of the plot of Plenty. Um, there are a whole host of events where you know writers, actors are interviewed. Um, there's a there's a hoedown happening on Oakland's Park in the summer connected to Oklahoma. We have all of our theatre days and all of our leap events uh, where people can have greater insights into the productions, how they're put up, how they're made, how they're brought about. Um, practical as well as um, more academic. And as we touched upon before, so no season is complete without CFYT, um, and this season their presence is really sort of there. Um, so you spoke, she mentioned Crossing Lines, which is a promenade production in summer, um, and then also the Christmas show is coming up. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah, so we've had quite um, the last two Christmases, Beauty and the Beast and Sleeping Beauty. Um, apart from the word beauty in the title, there's another connection, which is they've both had a kind of darkness. So in Sleeping Beauty, our puppet for beauty was quite dark, and obviously in Rufus Norris's adaptation of Sleeping Beauty, which we did, um, there's a baby-eating ogre, ogress. Um, so, you know, it's had quite a dark strain, which I have to say, the young people have loved. Their parents, not always, but anyway, um, but we decided this year that we'd have just a, a kind of blockbuster, uplifting Christmas. Again, maybe because we are in need of a you know, proper cheering up, but um, we're going to do The Wizard of Oz. And uh, we're inviting Lucy Betts back, the director who gave us um, a wonderful production of Sleeping Beauty last season. Lucy, again, is an alumnus of CFYT, so wonderful that we're able to keep offering her these opportunities. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm excited for Christmas already. Mm. 
Um, so to round up, so for people that are at home flicking through their brochures uh, or the more tech savvy on you know laptops and iPads and whatever, um, what what do you want them to feel when they're sort of looking through the, the season, whether they're a first time booker or whether they're you know they've come for years and years? Well, I'd like people to come and see the things that they connect with, and some people I hope will be you know will want to connect with everything, and that's great. And I hope there will, I, well, I'm sure there will be in our core audience people who will come and see everything, and we're lucky that we have people who do that. Um, but I also want people to come and, and you know, try something new. And what we found last year with Cock, for example, was that some people were frightened initially because of the title of the play, but very quickly word of mouth went around and people realised that it was pure theatre and pure class too. And so I'm hoping in our audience that there are people who are feeling more and more adventurous as time goes on and want that kind of uh, immersive experience, say for Sing Your Heart Out for the Lads, or who want to see Ibsen's classic play reimagined, um, but, who also, but also people who just want to come and enjoy the musical, the summer musical, and have just a, um, you know, a, a bit of respite from their daily grind. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping no one ever should feel like they have to go to the theatre but I'm hoping that there is something as they're flicking through the brochure that they feel like um, there is something that excites them. And it's not long till they can book. No, so booking opens on Saturday if you're a friend. It's only 35 quid and you get priority booking for a whole week. And it does, you know, we do get booked up. And, um, and then it goes on sale to the public online a week on Saturday. Um, but I, I tell people to get in there fast. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Daniel. Um, and here's the Festival 19. Thank you very much, George.